So like my good friend Rodney Dangerfield once said, I'm okay today, but whoo, <laughs> last week I was a mess. That was all last week. Today, things are much better. Learning how to live life together again, kind of refocusing. Um, Emma got married last September to a wonderful young man who happens to be a Cubs fan. We're working on that. Um, and she's expecting her first baby in April. Libby, yay! Li uh, <laughs> Kelly's going to be a grandma! Um, Hi, Libby's. <laughs> Libby uh, had moved out in February with her very serious boyfriend, who I expect would probably be my second son in law. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> and so. This spring, I once again kind of confronted um, some question marks. And I wrote this. It's called Empty Nests and Full Bookshelves. The scene played suddenly on my mental movie screen. Me in front of some kind of a 12-step support group, anxiously staring at my shoes. Then, in a quavering voice, Hello, my name is Tom. I'm a bookaholic. <laughs> A muffled response arose. It sounded something like, hello, Tom, but their chins were all buried in their chests as their heads drooped towards their books, nooks, kindles, tablets, and phones in their laps. So it was kind of hard to make out exactly what they said. This vision came to mind as I carted yet another laundry basket of the 700 plus books that comprise my personal library down from the attic in our garage, then up the stairs in my house to my new office. My first thought, geez, I have a lot of books. <laughs> my second thought, wow, my back is killing me. And neither thought was exactly accurate. First, these were just the books that would fit into my new space. They don't include the dozens more that are still up in the attic or that my daughters have borrowed. Borrowed. <laughs> Not to mention the 103 that are on my nook, which is a whole lot lighter and easier to tote than their more traditionally bound brethren. My wife, Kelly, and I are both voracious readers. However, I tend to read both comp compulsively and obsessively. I'll stumble onto an author and buy everything by that person. And I refuse to part with most of my books, whereas she easily gives most of hers away. A very serious character flaw, if you ask me. <laughs> and second, back spasms weren't the only pain involved in this process. You see, my new office is actually our youngest daughter's old bedroom. See, we are now officially empty nesters. I admit that many people do not see this status as reason for emotional anxiety, much less physical strain. But truth be told, I have struggled with this transition. To be sure, it has its good points. First and foremost is the welcome feeling that we now have adequate space again. For the last few years, two full-grown adults, two adolescents, and first one and then another small Shih Tzu struggled to carve and claim some room in our comfy but small house. 21 years ago, our first and so far only home perfectly suited our young family. No basement, no problem. Not much room beyond the three small bedrooms, one and a half baths, living room, family room, and kitchen. No worries. We were merely two adults, a three-year-old, and an infant. Shih Tzus don't take up that much space. But then our kids did that irritating thing that kids tend to do. They grew up. They became tweens. And then teens, commandeering more space. Things got tighter with each passing birthday. But we fully expected to move in a few years in any case, so no big whoop. Then we, like many others, ran Titanic light into the frozen iceberg of the Great Recession. Moving simply was not in the cards. Instead, we made do. Two adults and now two young adults, and the ever present, ever sleeping Shih Tzu, shoehorned into a house that even Mother Hubbard might have found a little bit snug. To accommodate, both Kelly and I sacrificed any personal space beyond our bedroom. Both professionals with hobbies and side interests, yet neither of us with an office or a workroom or a hobby nook. That's okay. When the girls move out, we placated each other while mentally measuring the floor space in their bedrooms. <laughs> Your mother, not me. I did not do that. <laughs> soon, too soon for me, I admit, the time came. 
Emma, our oldest, moved in with her fiancé a year before their wedding. Kelly flipped Emma's bedroom into a sewing and cross-stitching haven faster than a reality television show. <laughs> Great. Good for her. Yes. <laughs> Is she gone yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, she's in the car. Okay. <laughs> Great. Good for her. Well earned and much deserved. For me, not so easily done. Olivia, our youngest, moved out a couple months ago. Knowing that I was still having a tough dad transition, Kelly sincerely encouraged me to make over Olivia's bedroom into the office and writing space that I had craved for two decades. She knew that if, I didn't, that if she didn't gently nudge me in the right direction, I might wander around the muddy field of my malaise forever, like a dumb farm animal untethered but unable to see the open gate right there at the end of the barbed wire fence. And she was right. She was always right. It took a while to Can screw up the current. She's <laughs> it took a while to screw up the courage to move the desk and the chair up the stairs and load that first basket of books up from the attic. But now, after a few weeks of organizing and reorganizing, I like it a lot. Not just the new office, the new nest too. See, the real challenge wasn't the lack of space in our house. Rather, it was how much space my kids take in my heart, and in my brain, and in my spirit. I love our daughters. But parents must love their kids. It says so right in the contract. It's like, you have to do that. My problem is that I like our daughters. I truly enjoy spending time with my kids because I admire the young adults that they've become. During one of my many self-pitying, me, not her, conversations about our daughter's new lives, Kelly bluntly stated what should have been obvious all along. We raised two smart, talented, hardworking, caring, loving, thoughtful, successful, and happy young adults who are going to contribute a lot to this world, thanks in part to us. We've done our jobs, she said. Now it is time for us to do something else, and for them to find and make their own places in the world. By the way, this was about the zillionth time in our 32 years together that Kelly had patiently helped me see a forest of truth ridiculously obscured by the gnarled trees of my own emotions. Maybe one of these days I'll figure out how to thank her. Certainly, I miss our girls. Obviously, it was easier to share their company when we shared the same living space, if for sheer logistics, if nothing else. But to wish them home again, just to appease my own parental pining, is arrogant and silly and selfish. And you know what? <clears throat> it's fine. We still talk daily as they run between work and their new homes. Emma, sometimes six times a day. <laughs> we have lunch occasionally. I insist on buying. I am still dad, after all. And they, and neither one of them ever refuses that. And they stop by to raid our freezer and wash their clothes. Surprise, surprise. Plus, that's why God invented big kitchen tables and Monopoly and weekends and holidays. And, as an extra bonus, I finally have my own little room where I can stretch my legs, listen to my music, type a few thoughts, and chat with 800 friends. Thank you. <laughs> that was up in that garage. That <laughs> two by four flooring, on there, those books had to come down. Otherwise, the roof was going to come down. You're ruining the mood. <laughs> so, here's what I have learned over the last four years youth gives us fire, age gives us wisdom. Both are gifts, vital and linked. As we move into middle age, we see both the past and the future more clearly. We strive, armed with the understanding that comes with experience and hopefully growing maturity, to improve our own lives and, those of, uh, those, and the lives of those around us. And we reaffirm what we have learned and always knew, that everything is made better, not always easier, but better, with friendship and patience, humor, sympathy, empathy, and love. No matter what my daughters say, I am not over the hill. Still, I am close enough to the top that I can see what's on the other side, and it doesn't look too bad. Thank you.
Thank you very much, everybody. I am honored and flattered. I really, truly am that you came out tonight. I appreciate it very, very much. Uh, I'll be uh, in the back here if anybody would like copies of, the, of this book or of the other two. Uh, we have them here for sale. Discounted pricing, special for the holidays. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Have a great evening. <laughs>